It's a really cool time to be a muscle car and racing enthusiast as there's recently been a couple of really cool films that came out about Americana and racing. Uh, a big popular one was uh, Ford versus Ferrari, which told the story of how Ford beat Ferrari at Le Mans in 1966. You ready? I was born ready, Mr. Shelby. Hit it. And that was definitely a Hollywood version of that story. Um, but today we're gonna touch on two others that kind of go hand in hand with that story. Uh, they're both produced by Chassis Media, which is uh, comedian Adam Carolla's group um, and directed by uh, Nate Adams. And they're both documentaries and they're done very, very well. Um, the 24 Hour War uh, tells again that story of Ford versus Ferrari in 1966, the elements leading up to it uh, and the racing action. But what's cool about it is it's told by the people who were there. So it's actually Carol Shelby's voice and uh, um, people from back in the day. So uh, uh, Parnelli Jones and uh, um, Dan Gurney and, and a lot of the uh, uh, team members of, of Team Shelby. So if you watch Ford versus Ferrari, I would also recommend seeing 24 Hour War to see a little more historically accurate versions of, of what went down building up to that race. Uh, but the other film is called uh, Shelby American, and it is a documentary on the life of Carroll Shelby. And that's the one we're gonna chat about here today for a little bit. Carroll Shelby, to me, um, has lived He's almost like a cat, you know, he kind of had nine different lives. And it was always challenging for me to kind of contextualize what chapter of Shelby's life was happening in relation to the others. And this film does a great job of telling that story and revealing a lot of facts that most people probably don't know about Carol Shelby. So we all know about the cars and the racing, but uh, what I learned right away was how successful of a racer Carol Shelby was in the 50s. Uh, leading up to his championship victory at Le Mans in 1959. So he was a tremendous racer. Uh, the problem with his racing is that he did have a heart problem and it wasn't safe for him to race anymore. So not wanting to get out of that whole career, he moved into his next chapter, which was building cars. And his goal was to build the Shelby Cobra, uh, essentially, which was a race car that you could drive on the street. And the Shelby Cobra, as many people know, it was an AC Ace body and powered by a Ford 289 and it went off to do a lot of things. Um, the problem with the Cobra was that it didn't have the aerodynamics to be competitive at some of the major global events. So to me, the next chapter of Shelby becomes redesigning the Cobra and using uh, Peter Brock to make a streamlined version targeted to win the 24 hours of Daytona. So they named it the Cobra Daytona and that's a whole separate story that most people only know kind of on its own. Well, at the same time, uh, the next chapter of Shelby is the Mustang chapter, the GT350 and eventually GT500 stories. So at the same time, Shelby was working with Ford. He had success with the road race cars and Ford thought, hey, our new Mustang is a neat car. Let's see if we can make that successful in sports car racing. So he hires Shelby American to transform what they called the secretary's car of a basic Mustang and turn it into a track capable and eventually race winning machine. So Shelby had that iron in the fire. And that was the same time that Ford said, hey, we wanna go for Ferrari at Le Mans. So, uh, Ford had been developing their GT40 program, but eventually they realized they needed some help, so they tapped Shelby American again to develop the GT40 program and eventually win at Le Mans. So those three chapters between the GT40, the Cobra Daytona, and the Mustang program were all happening at the same time. And it's really amazing to think of how much management that took to uh, be successful in all of those. And he, and he certainly was. Uh, Shelby won the Manufacturer's Cup with the Cobra, Cobra Daytona. Uh, of course, they did beat Ferrari. And, and the, uh, the Shelby Mustang GT program was, was very, very popular too. Uh, the movie also articulates how the relationship changed and Ford ended up taking over the GT350, GT500 production in 67, and it was far less Shelby American. It was all Ford internally. So it did a good job of telling that story. The next chapter is after Ford won Le Mans uh, repeatedly up until 69, uh, Shelby broke off and was back to sports car racing, racing for Toyota. 
And it was fun because the two top dogs were uh, Toyota versus uh, Datsun or Nissan. And that team was headed up by Shelby's former designer, Peter Brock. And Peter Brock is in this movie telling that story. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, people on camera and, and real voices again, very similar to the 24 hour war, a long list of, uh, you know, famous racers and, and historians and people that you get the story right from them. Uh, after the uh, uh, stint with Toyota, Carroll Shelby kind of backed out of the automobile side for a while. He was uh, uh, still perpetuating his chili business and is credited with starting the very first chili cook-off in about 1970. So there's another chapter of the Shelby story. Uh, and then we end up in the late 70s, early 80s, when Shelby teams up with Chrysler and does the Shelby Daytona Z, the front drive turbo car, and of course the Omni GLH and GLHS turbo. Uh, little Econo boxes that were designed to perform very well and, and boost the Chrysler image using the Shelby name. And that kind of culminated with the development of the Dodge Viper, which was yet another chapter of, of Shelby's amazing history. Uh, and the Dodge Viper did its thing. By that point, Shelby said, I still have always wanted to do my very own sports car. So, he, of course, he created the Shelby Series 1. Uh, which was powered by an Oldsmobile, and, and that car has a life of its own. We featured one here on Muscle Car of the Week. Uh, and then after that, he reunited with the Ford people, uh, and that story started and still continues today with the, uh, the flat plane crank GT350 cars and the GT500s and, and everything else. So you have all of these different um, avenues that Shelby was involved in with different manufacturers, different forms of racing, different businesses. And it's really neat how the movie Shelby American does a great job of tying them all together. So at the end of the day, you have context of, of this man's life and all of his impact. Uh, it's, it's highly worth watching. The 24 Hour War and Shelby American are both available currently on Netflix. But if you go to chassis.com, C-H-A-S-S-Y.com, you can see the 20 or so uh, automotive and racing films that this group has done, um, all very similar in quality, uh, very engaging films. There's a great one on Paul Newman as well, I recommend. Um, so I totally recommend checking those out. And if you wanna learn more about those cars, uh, like I said before, we featured many Shelbys from the Brothers Collection. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, search on Muscle Car of the Week, just the word Shelby, and you'll see everything from a stock GT350 uh, to a GT350R to a competition GT350R model, one that was used in a Shelby racing school, uh, and then beyond that, of course, that Series 1 car, some GT500s, convertibles, um, GT350H, Hertz rental cars, uh, all the way up to uh, a 2016 flat plane crank uh, GT350R model. And we might even have uh, a GT40 coming up on a future episode of Muscle Car of the Week. So for those who are into Shelby's or those who might not know much about them, I recommend checking out uh, the Shelby American documentary. And we'll have another awesome car from the Brothers Collection or maybe something else next time on Muscle Car of the Week.